Army Man 2 is the best game of the franchise. Thank you for watching and see you next time. If only it was that easy to review this game. Hmm. We pick up exactly where the first game finished and if you don't remember the end don't worry because on the release day of Army Man 2 we were blessed with the remake of the original in 3D. The remake that is the antithesis of the first and second game and with the modern insight we have today it was also the first crack on the solid foundation that was being laid down by 3DO. But we're not reviewing the remake today, we're reviewing the sequel. At the start we're exposed to a whole new world, our world. The secret weapon ended up being a portal that communicated between the plastic world and the real one. What are the consequences of Sarge gathering all the tree keys and unlocking the portal? Not only did he probably act as a pawn for the Rogue Tans officials, but we also unlock wide range of new weapons and occult cultural reference of the 90s. Hmm, not sure which one is more damaging here. At the start of the campaign we're invading a kitchen counter and immediately get overwhelmed by a satisfying feeling of well-being. I definitely felt like a little child playing with my toy soldiers, but the experience is short-lived once we notice how filthy the grounds are. I mean, who the hell has cockroach chilling in the cupboard while the sink is over flooded with dirty wares? And there seems to be a huge problem with the stove as it keeps turning on and off at the intermittent interval. Truly a fire hazard, if you ask me. To top it all, there is also a portal to the plastic world in the cookie jar. Time to get Gordon Ramsay in here, cause we got a real kitchen nightmare. The squad system has been vast improved compared to the first game. Rather than having clueless and useless troop, you have tough and intelligent men following you to the end. These units are permanent and stick with you mission after mission. They even have their own names and characteristic which creates an uneasy bound with them. So if you are like me, you'll probably do anything to protect and defend these brothers in arms. Also known as leaving them at a spawn or other safe points as they are terrible at surviving. The revamp weapon system is magnificent. You're no longer limited to only two pickups, you can take up to five and stack them up like there's no tomorrow, as mentioned previously. We have access to the incredible real world weapons. Magnifying glasses, eight balls of fate, pesticide spray, fly swatter, and much more. Of course, we still have our classic arsenal of grenades, mortars, bazookas, and flamethrower. There is also a large selection of vehicles from the small jeep and off track all the way to the mighty tank. The story is also more engaging than the first installment. I think the constant contrast offered by the plastic and real world gives us a deeper understanding of the green struggle. Unlike the prequel, we also have clear enemies and objectives thanks to the intermittent cutscenes. First, we find our way back to the HQ to help out the tank shipping factory, followed quickly by an invasion of an occupied airfield. Then we start chasing a rock green officer that has Machiavellian plan to melt down fallen soldiers into a zombie's army. Chasing this man around, we finally uncover his lair in a small isolated archipelago. Once dead, we move on to our next target, the main villain of our ongoing story, the Major Miler himself. The last cutscene lets us know that we're still just at the start of the Green's campaign against the evil Tan. But what we do not know back then is that we're also at the start of the quality downfall simultaneously beginning the coffin nailing of 3DO. In this installment, the graphics are not that bad, although not exceptionally good, especially the given resolution that are limited to no option at all. There's also the sound effects that can get quite annoying at times, especially the Sarge getting wounded noise that is extremely obnoxious. <laughs> but we can get over it. The music is very good, but it is not an original creation for the game. It is actually just quite popular classical music has been taken and modified a little bit and injected right into the game and all the song can be found pretty much anywhere else 
They're all good classical music, I must give that whoever's decided the music had very good taste. Army Man 2 will always have a special place in my heart. Not because it is an extraordinary game, quite to the contrary, but it has been a game that defined my childhood as a PC gamer. A game that set me to thrive toward more strategical and tactical games. In my opinion, if you did not have the chance back in the day to play Army Man 2, you might still enjoy it, but it is a game that gets tedious and lags steps at the time. In reality, it is just another pillar of the gaming industry that set a precedence on the perception we have of video games, whereas at the time we could play Age of Empires or Counter-Strike to absorb a realistic struggle, we were offered with a new perception that toys are still games, even in this new virtual realm. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review, and if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button to see more. See you next time.